Okay, good morning everyone. We got this beautiful 50i here came for the full brake kit upgrade installation. Came all the way from Houston. And what we got for it today is this the largest kit that I offer so far on the market. That is 400 millimeter brake rotors front and three um 385 rear from the X5M. This is from the FTN M5. This thing is, I mean it's it's massive. And we got the FTN M5 brake calipers as well as the Porsche Panamera rear. We got custom brackets that are billet 7075 aluminum and we got the gray 12 hardware um, right here to go with this. Um, this kit, I always suggest uh, braided brake lines. The factory lines will work, but this one's the stop by stop tech. I always recommend stop tech. It's probably the best fitting kit in the um, on the market. Uh, we got some, some shields, dust shields. We couldn't locate rear dust shields, but we will make the stock one work. And otherwise you should be um, good to install here brake calipers come with the this beautiful B, b05 monte carlo blue paint and they are like a candy okay now we're gonna start it's gonna be a step-by-step -step diy for those interested and i okay, will so now we got the wheels pulled and what we got here is the standard 365 millimeter full cast uh disc so full cast is going to be pretty hot um, for the wheel bearing and full cast also means it's gonna be pretty heavy. So we're gonna fix that in just a minute But what we got here is this Allen. I think I don't know. It's probably t6 would be my guess So we're gonna pull that Allen right there and we're gonna remove the brake caliper and let it hang of the um, control arm here and We're gonna uns unsnap this pad sensor. We're just gonna reuse it for now Okay, gonna get this out of the way. So it's gonna be uh, this Allen and then we're gonna remove the caliper the caliper is held in by a couple of these. Hold on, let me try to show you. A couple of these external Torx uh, screws. I'll mention the size in just a second. But this is where we're gonna get with this to get the caliper out. Of the okay, way. so this is a six millimeter um, Allen to get this this Allen bolt out, the set screw. The key thing when you're going back is putting some anti seize on it. These are prone to getting stuck and then you have to drill those out. Just got to make sure you got the right tool to get this removed. Now I'm starting on the uh, brake caliper. The caliper back. bolt is E18 external torques. This is it. That's how it looks. But you can use a 14 millimeter uh, socket as well. Now we're going to remove the second bolt right there and the caliper is gonna come off. What we got here is, we got the caliper hanging there by the spring. Just get it out of the way for now. We're gonna test fit things. Um, we got the brake disc out of the way as well. And this, this, this thing is pretty heavy. Um, the only final thing is the um, cleat that goes right here, slides. I use this kind of radiator hose pick as well as the just regular trim clip. And all you gotta do is pretty much just slide it up of the brake line, it releases the brake line. At this point, we're good to go. We're just gonna start, we're gonna remove the dust shield. Just gonna be just four, I think, four. Yes, one, two, three, four, 10 millimeter um, screws. Get out of the way, clean everything up, and we're gonna start, um, we're probably gonna clean the hub as well. We're gonna use a metal brush and get all that rust off, just to ensure the new disc sits f uh, flat on the hub surface. I'll show you how we do it in just a minute. use the regular manual wrench. This bolts feel pretty crusty. Yeah, impact would be a bad idea. Hold up. Yes, yeah, so we're gonna loosen them manually because if you break this bolt, it ain't gonna make you cry. That's it. Ooh, this thing's doing something. Okay, it's moving, cool. Yes. Yes, be careful with these bolts. I suggest just manually taking them loose. Because it's like, might have a red Loctite on those at some point of their life. But anyways, that does shield is out. I'm gonna clean everything up, and start putting them together. 
Yeah. Okay, so we're using a little brush and I use the Sonax wheel cleaner. I think it's one of the best wheel cleaners in my opinion. Just brush everything, just make sure everything's cleaned up. I'm just gonna rinse it off with some water and maybe some spray detailer. And we are we are gonna be ready to um, to wire brush this hub. Okay, now an important part is we're gonna wire brush. I use just the Harbor Freight wire brush, which is gonna go all around the the edges and we're gonna remove the all the excessive rust and all the debris but I'm gonna need two hands for it so I'm, I'll be right back I'll this show you what I suggest for the hub you're just gonna put a thin coat uh, the key thing is having anti seize right here on this edge it's where the most of the rust accumulates this is the copper anti seize at high temperature so we've got anti seize on so next next step what we're gonna do is we're gonna disconnect this brake pad wear sensor and just let it get it out of the way. It's pretty much slides into the pad. I'll show you in just a second how to remove it. And then we're gonna uh, mock up the brake rotor and get it, you know, get it set on the hub. And then we're gonna mock up the bracket. Well, we're actually, we're gonna start with the bracket now. I'll show you. So with the I dust shield out of the way, we're gonna install this. You can install it with the dust shield on where it's supposed to be, but it's easier to do it. Then we're gonna use the factory e-torx to bolt up this bracket to the back, from the back. So the bolt comes from here, this like so. Brackets is this way. You don't have to use any um, thread locker on this, but you, if you desire to, you can throw some red on it because this bracket is gonna be there for, for good. But yeah, um, we're gonna bolt up this bracket and uh, I'll so show you. bracket is on, we gotta tighten those bolts to 85 Newton meters got a torque wrench here I'm gonna get a click click and we'll be ready to install the dust shield hold on one sec dust shield gotta be bent just a little bit I got it marked right there I'm just gonna bend it towards the car that way it slides past that bracket all the way in there and it's gonna be the same way at the bottom as well just pretty much get a mark where you need it to be bent and we're gonna use some pliers and we're just gonna bend it all the way out or maybe we also actually, we got it actually we decided to trim it it's very easy just mark and trim I use these clan tools uh, metal scissors and they are excellent for this type of work everything lines up everything lines up great just gotta be past this bracket so we're gonna tighten those uh, 10 millimeter screws and we should be good to get good to go with this sample. Got the brake rotor on, the shields on, and we are ready to bolt up the caliper. The caliper is going to bolt up to those uh, mountain holes. So pretty much sits over the rotor. Hold on one second. Okay, so the caliper is on. We're tightening these bolts, the uh, mountain bolts, to 70, 75 newton meters. And this is done, the bolts in the back are done, and we got the uh, brake disc is on, obviously. So what we got going on here is, this is directional brake disc, so the veins, the cooling veins gotta go this way. So there's gonna be, this is the left side, obviously the other side's gonna be right. But otherwise, I think it looks pretty massive. Uh, the best part, uh, I forgot to mention, the best part is, this brake disc is, the new one, is actually lighter, one pound lighter, than this old um that's that it got some grooves it got it got some lift to it so you're gaining one pound each so it's two pounds of rotational mass and you pick up in size like crazy this you pick up drastic size difference so um this is definitely the way to go okay so now at this point before i disconnect the factory line what i'm gonna do is here is the part number for the stop tag Again, as I mentioned prior, I love the stop tag because the length is correct, everything is correct about these lines. It's just bam, bam, hot tour, and you're ready. Um, 
I sprayed some croil right there. Uh, this is a Houston car, so I don't think I don't think there's gonna be any rust issues or any season issues. But I'm gonna um, what I'm gonna do now at this point is I'm gonna install run this brake line all to the factory connection, and once we're ready, once I get it hooked up right here in this factory location uh, with a metal clip, once everything is um, secured in, in in place then I'm gonna disconnect and swap all the lines so that way we don't lose much of a brake fluid okay, I got the stop tech line started here uh, in the caliper you have to be super careful with this just make sure you don't cross thread it if you cross thread it it's a big big deal so just take your time and uh, spin the line and all the way till the bottom is out then you get your 14 millimeter and literally less than quarter turn one eighth of a turn and that should seal right there um, obviously on the first start and uh, drive of the car and the brake application once we drive it for a couple miles we're just going to check for leaks and that's going to be one of the spots that I would uh, recommend checking for uh, right there and it's going to be at the factory uh, connection so where we're at right now is this fitting is kind of off a little bit so we're going to kind of twist it and slide it what I, what I usually do is I'm going to spray some brake uh, some car detailer here so it slides easier and just gonna twist and twist and twist. We gotta move it a couple inches so it slides into the factory bracket location. And uh, after that, we're gonna proceed with the, we're removing the factory caliper. We're gonna wait as well. And uh, we're gonna disconnect at this location there at the factory hard line. So as mentioned before, I got some coil on it. I don't think it's gonna be any issues um, disconnecting that so there. What I do is do some hog tour. And then what I do is I use my, it's only got one hand today, you only go like this, and just press it. Try not to slide it off the uh, rubber grommet because it will become a headache almost immediately. But yeah, this, this is where we should be. You can actually bend this bracket in just a little bit as well. And we should be good to go. And the brake line is gonna run all the way to the factory location. But yes, we're gonna slide this in. Um, I'm actually gonna run it Hold up, wait a minute. You're gonna run it right past these two. You're gonna drop it in there. And then we're gonna use a, an aluminum, oh, whichever, probably steel clip, doesn't matter, that came in the kit. And we're just gonna tap it in from top. I'll show you once I'm done how this goes. Okay, in. this is the way I install this uh, stop tack metal bracket. So pretty much you slide the line in there and then um, you slide the, the, the metal pin all the way down and then I pretty much what I do is I tap this down and just get them bent all the way over this bracket and it doesn't move. So you got little slack in the line there. All you need, you have plenty of line left to connect to the factory connection, to the factory hard line. And that there, so the key thing is, I usually like keeping this line about quarter, quarter inch from all the moving parts. <clears throat> so it, yes, at this point we are ready to um, disconnect the stock, stock hard line and stock caliper, and just move it out of the way. And we will connect this. So the idea is, this is 11 millimeter or a 716th. We're just going to use a flare range and then loosen it. We're just going to loosen it completely and this uh, factory line is going to drop down through this mountain bracket. Then we're going to use this line and just fairly quickly connect it. And we're going to keep this spring, just try not to lose the spring here because it keeps the tension on those lines. So we're going to disconnect and install this one in, its, in the factory location. We're going to be done with this side and we're going to weigh the caliper. So now the key thing, uh, we got this already installed. We got it tightened. Do not over tighten this. Just take your time um, because you can twist the factory uh, factory hard line. And if you do that, it's yeah, it's gonna be painful. So anyway, we got this cal caliper completely dis uh, disconnected. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna carefully run this line out of the way. So the key thing right now is getting the caliper out of the way without spilling any brake fluid. You don't want to get brake fluid on any painted surface, especially the caliper or the car. And um, so I'm going to run this line under the pad sensor all the way out. And we're just going to put it right there in the box. So just make sure we do not um, spill anything onto the, onto the caliper. Okay, 
Okay, so now we got this uh, brake pad sensor. I usually reuse the old ones. I don't have no issue reusing. Uh, I would rather have the factory old one than the something after market new, just my personal preference. So you gotta ensure you have this metal clip on top of that sensor and it slides into the pad right here. You gotta put it the correct way. This is the way. And we're just gonna push it in there, in, in place. That's it, bam. So this is it, it's good to go. Snaps, and I usually zip tie it right here, just out of the way for the good measure. Okay, let me get this all lined up. Okay, now that we're removing all the um, brake lines and such, we gotta make sure our brake fluid is full. So what we do is we're gonna take this um, cowl piece off. There is that thing I gotta squeeze together. And then there is your brake fluid reservoir. So you can see there's a, there is still plenty of fluid. I recommend not going below this stamp or minimum. Always keep your brake fluid up. But I'll, I'll remove this piece out, out the way and uh, We'll keep the brake fluid okay, up. So we're like. done bleeding with this caliper. So what I do usually is I pretty much zip tie the bottle to the, um, you can actually see the color of the brake fluid. It's semi-fresh. Definitely supposed to be clear or light light gold. Um, so what I do with the, with the caliper is once I'm done bleeding, I usually spray some car detailer right there because at times uh, the brake fluid will come up on the threads and, and it will start lifting the paint. But all we gotta do is just Spray both liters a lot and just spray the caliper and with a clean microfiber just pretty much wipe them off and you should be good to go oh yeah it's ready like candy on the rear and now the front is done I'm gonna send the video in just a minute on the front so it's gonna be the same steps the set screw uh, it's gonna be a couple screws back there the external torques the idea is the same I'm gonna get the caliper get it out of the way we're gonna move this uh, remove the brake rotor and we're gonna get to to the cleaning part Ready to install the brake rotor. Uh, the hub being clean. We got some um, the high temperature anti seize on it. We got the bracket zine. Uh, bracketed bolts is tightened to 85 newton meters, and we are about ready to throw the the, board, uh, the rotor back on. We got the brake rotor on. So this here is the uh, stop tech ready to brake line. So what I usually what I recommend doing is installing, getting the finger tight installing the brake line before you install the caliper. When you put the caliper on, it's go you're gonna be at a very, very odd angle over there. So it's just gonna, ideally, you wanna do it like when it's in front of you and then set the caliper on top of the spindle, on top of the bracket, uh, once the, with the brake line already installed. So we're just gonna get it started. All right, and I'll get the caliper on. We 
we're tightening the caliper bolts, caliper two bracket bolts to 75 newton meters. And this is gonna click clack too. All right, that's it. You ready to go? Okay, with the caliper on, now, now that we're under the car, we gotta remove that retaining clip right there, the metal clip, and we gotta loosen these um, bolts. It's 11 millimeter. I'm not using the flare range because I already loosened it. Okay, so that's good right there. And this deal here, what you can do is just get a 90, 90 degree, and just kind of work it up. You will see it's gonna pop right off. There you go. Bam, bam. So this piece is loose. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna loosen that brake line and we're gonna connect this uh, stop tech line to the factory hard line. Just fairly easy. Just gonna start loosening this deal here a little bit. Little by little, it's gonna Start licking some fluid. It's not gonna be crazy, just a little bit. And uh, there you go, see it's coming. The fluid is coming out green. So I'm glad we are doing the fluid flush because this thing's seen better days. This fluid is rough. I'm glad we're doing this brake fluid, brake pad, brake, full brake job. I got everything installed. The, the new ready lines connected over there, and we got a tie, but not crazy tight, just right tight. We got this uh, metal clip. You see, I bend the factory tabs over it so it doesn't come out. It's in there for good. Uh, the caliper is in place. We have to replace the, the uh, brake pad sensor. Just wait on the brake, brake pad sensor to come in. Meanwhile, there are good tips. Make sure this line is about a quarter inch away from the strut so just kind of if you need to just push it in push it out however you need to just adjust it okay and we're about to jump on the other side of the car The car is done, we got the brakes bedded in. We got it all ready. Look at it. Perfect pad contact, everything is clean.